I mean, you, you, I know you're given a great deal of footage with David Fincher, and you've been working with him for several films now, since Zodiac, right? Um, Angus much earlier, myself since Zodiac. Angus dates back to the title sequence of Seven. Yeah. I think, you know, it's like, um, we work exactly the same way, which is great because we can pass things <coughs> back and forth very easily <coughs> and transparently. I think, you know, we, we generally, it's sort of an OCD approach, but it's the only way to really quantify what we have. Before we even start editing, we do a very elaborate breakdown of each setup and each take. So we, da you know, David doesn't shoot like Billy Wilder where he'll do a funny take and then a sad take and then he's always driving towards a specific performance. So when you, when you get the dailies, take after take kind of looks the same, quite honestly. And it's only when you start to get granular with each moment of those takes, um, that's when you start to see the differences. And that's when you see big differences, actually, in performances. Um, so we actually, before we're, I guess we're cutting when we're pulling selects, we're, we're breaking things down so we can actually assess what the best moment of this multitude of takes is. We start doing that and, and looking for performances, and then there's the performance aspect, and then there's the, the blocking and staging of the, of the scene itself, sort of the architecture of the scene. And they kind of go hand in hand. One can sort of take the lead, where you'll take the last take of every scene, uh, of every setup, and very quickly, like in 15 minutes, half hour, do a very rough assembly of the scene just to kind of get the lay of the land. And then you'll spend, you know, two days going through all the footage looking for the great pieces. So it's, it's sort of a, it's a dance between the architecture of the scene and the performances. It's when David shoots something, he usually starts wide. I'm, I'm assuming most people do this, but he starts wide and he slowly works his way in. And his close-ups, a lot of the time, are the main points to the scene, whether or not you use them. So I, I'll watch the wide take to kind of get the understanding of what's happening, and then I'll go to where he finished. I'll go in opposite order of mm. David, so I understand what he was driving at. And then I find when I start selecting all of the close-ups and work my way backwards, I know what I'm looking for in the masters and the wides, because I know where he wants to end up. Similarly, when we, like we string all the takes out, into a select sequence, and then we start, you know, lifting bits out of those takes that are great. Um, we always start with the star take. What I'm, I remember when I started, and I think this is what most people do, you start with take number one, or whatever the first printed take is. And um, I kind of realized early on, you can fall in love with that first take, and then take two comes along, and you go, oh my god, this is so much better. And then on set, they're continually making that better. So what we do now is we take the star take, or whatever take the director thought was the best on set, and look at that, assuming that that's the best. And then you start to compare the other circle takes, and then in de descending order, just the printed takes. So you kind of, you work from supposedly the best, where everything was worked out, towards the earlier if stuff. If you go the other way, it's like, if you've got 18 takes, and you often get a lot of takes with David, and you'll get 20 angles and 18 takes, so there's a lot of stuff to, but if you start from the beginning, y you end up, of 18 shots, you'll select 16. <laughs> so when you start at the end, you, you know, hopefully end up with three or four. 